Hello everyone, it's Divine Couture with Learn Commercial Real Estate and DK by the Bay. I'm hopping on live today and I'm so excited. I'm going to be joined by Steve Peterson with Infinity Investments and Danny Barber, an uh, amazing agent who is a wealth builder, who's part of the Learn Commercial Real Estate community. And I'm so excited that they just closed an amazing deal. And what that means is that we're going to talk to them a little bit about how they closed the deal, what they did, and what steps they took. So they should be joining us, and I'm going through a tunnel here, so hopefully I don't lose reception with you. On this channel, DK by the Bay, we focus solely on commercial real estate, closing of industrial, retail, and office properties. We talk about how to find clients, close deals, get over the finish lines, and get the check. Hopefully, Steve and Danny will be joining us soon. But in the meantime, I wanted to send you guys some encouraging messages because I know right now in commercial real estate, the market is fluctuating so much, but there's a lots of opportunities. So you've just got to stay in there. You've got to stay in the race. And you got to know that your good is coming and that it's all going to work out for you. One of the things that I begin to do is to be patient with myself when it comes to uh, commercial deals, right? Learning how to find the clients, we've got to be patient with ourselves. So the deal that Danny and Steve just completed is going to, um, I believe it was a barber shop. And the really interesting thing about this deal is that I believe Steve was already working with the landlord. They might have been trying to sell it. Here they are right now. Great. And so Steve and Danny just joined us and they're going to be sending us a request to be able to get inside the video um, to join us on a live. And let's see if I can send them. I think they've got to send us a request. Yay. So it should be something that says for you to be able to request to join the live. There it is. Oh. So excited to have these two on. Okay, you guys have been accepted. There you go. Accept. Can you accept? It's a barber shop. Okay, yes, go live with them. All right, guys, we should be going live with you. Okay, I'm pressing accept. Oh, they're unable to join for some reason. Hmm. Can Danny, can you try to send me a request on yours? Thanks for being patient, everyone. There we go. Oh, there we go. We in there. We figured awesome. it out. Awesome. Gotta set this thing up. Well, while Steve is getting it together, we're so excited. They've just closed a great deal, and they're going to be sharing some information with us. And Steve, hey, welcome. Hey, yes, ma'am. Welcome. No Sorry. 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 But we just in <laughs> here uh, making it all happen. And I'm very excited. For that. Very excited because we are just closing a deal. Uh, Danny Barber's outside on the phone, uh, uh, making deals as usual. But we just closed a deal on a commercial tenant, on a retail space. And you know, if you know anything about commercial real estate right now, it's not an easy thing to do uh, in general, even if you was downtown Oakland or downtown San Francisco. But we got this deal done. What makes it exciting is it's in East Oakland, deep East Oakland, right on Havens Court Boulevard in between Foothill and Bancroft. So if you know the zone, you know what we talk about. And we is super excited to have gotten a black business here uh, that is really going to serve the community. It's a barbershop. Perfect, I mean, perfect spot for a barbershop because there is a braid shop literally right next door. 
Tawanda's braids, and she's been there in the, in the community rocking for over 10 years. And so the, the background story on this is that this is a, a property that's mixed use for fourplex, two uh, ground level retail spaces, and then two apartments upstairs. Okay. The great thing about this is I, I had this listed for sale for a while. And because we had a vacancy in the commercial space, that's making that was making it very difficult to sell the property. Right. A, a vacant space, right? This is in a, in a in a fourplex where it was multifamily fourplex. A vacancy is great because that means you can go out well in a rent control market, like you said, Oakland, San Francisco, San Jose, parts of LA, anywhere they got a rent control, a vacant unit is a blessing. But not in commercial real estate, right? So we had a mixed use right. building with a vacancy. That was just a big black eye on the deal. So what mm -hmm. we did was, and the, the, the also I'm going to shout out the landlord because he was very flexible and accommodating. We, we, we put our heads together like, yo, what do we need to do? And we collectively said, you know what, maybe what we do is we take it off the market and we lease for sale. Take it off the market for sale, right? We go ahead and lease out the commercial space. Therefore, now we're making a what much more viable investment for someone. Because now, and again, commercial is you want that occupancy. If it was a fourplex mm -hmm. owner occupant can move into it fabulous. But in this situation, this is one where you know the leasing of the unit, which just got done today, makes the building, makes the investment more viable for an investor to go purchase it, right? And so, I'm breaking this all down, y'all, because I'm showing y'all how. We was able to solve the problem for the building, for the landlord, for the marketplace, for the tenants, right? We're looking for a quality spot that's going to give exposure. And we don't have any exposure. We got plenty of exposure over there. It's going to be functional for his business, and it's going to be affordable, right? So that that did all that. But I also want to bring it back to what DK is doing, right? Because I subscribe <laughs> to DK's um, commercial real estate program for commercial leasing. Now, I'm been in the commercial real estate game my, my whole damn life uh, uh, as an adult. You know what I mean? Since 03. Been in this game for a minute. Got my CCIM designation, started the company, but I'm in sales and acquisitions. Leasing is not my thing. You feel me? So, so I, as an expert in the business, a certified expert in the game, subscribe to what DK is doing on a monthly basis because I have to Thank you. Her. She's about to come in here in a second. We said, hey, look, we need to serve our community in Oakland with uh, commercial leases. We need to serve our, t our clientele and landlords with leasing up their buildings. And that is not my cup of tea. And as a, as a CEO or somebody going to expand the company, look, I'm like, yo, I've got to get the per a person, a team to handle this together. But I'm, I can't take away from my lane as a CEO and trying to go train and develop on a space where I don't even got no business uh, 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 speaking on that because I can speak to it, but I'm not the expert. You see, DK is an expert at this, and Thank so you. as a corporate business move, you know what I mean. We I've engaged DT, uh, DK for a nominal fee of whatever it is that we pay for DK's mentorship program of day, and then coming full circle. I think we she's been in the program maybe six to eight months. And, and she's now at the point, like right now, she can write up a commercial lease in full confidence. She can negotiate landlord to tenant um, directly. I'm not doing nothing other than say what's up to her, Danny. Hey, everybody. I'm sorry. I was, I was talking to Anna. <laughs> You're talking oh. to Anna. That is awesome. Yo, You're a superstar, you know. Danny. <laughs> You're a superstar. <laughs> she is. And I'm going to get out the way. I just, well, I just wanted to say, though, DK. I really appreciate what you're doing you. For, the for the community, for our industry in the commercial real estate, where it's not a lot of folks that got melanin in, in they, on their skin who is rocking at this business at a high level. But what you're doing is making sure that folk who do want to do it have an outlet, have somewhere to go where they can learn, where they can grow, and where they can get gamed up. So I just, I'm going to step to the side real I quick. Appreciate I appreciate that. I want Danny to get the spotlight for what she just did and talk a little bit about her, her work with you and all that. Awesome. You can make me cry. I love you guys so much. 
Debbie! Oh, oh we're so excited for you. Congratulations. Thank you. I'm so excited. And, you know, I think we might have found one for, for our girl over there on Claremont. And so we're, you know, we're, we're moving. And, you know, I, just like I was telling you, like, I definitely feel like just being able to learn a lot of things from you, Steve, it's really been, I feel like, propelling me in the right direction. And it's super exciting to help other, like you said, people with melanin in our skin get into these spaces. And, you know, a lot of them are scared and they don't know what to do. And even with this one, you know, I, I could feel myself guiding him along the way with certain things. Let's make sure, you, you know, you get this, make sure you get your insurance. It's not just for the owners, it's for, your, for yourself and for your protection if anything was to happen. And, you know, just encouraging a lot of people to, to take that leap of faith because a lot of them are scared. And, you know, we were just talking. It's a great time right now for people to get into those spaces because a lot of these spaces have been sitting vacant and the, the owners and landlords really want to get people in there. And so it's just an amazing time where they really have that footing to say, hey, can I, can I get a couple of things or, you know, can I get a few months free rent or a rent abatement rather or, you know, can I get some tenant improvements? And a lot of these owners are, are willing to get them in there, you know? And so it's, yeah. I'm really excited. You know, the, the transaction went, went as smooth as it possibly could be. And I'm just excited to, to get more people into spaces. And I'm just, I'm thankful that I got a great team of mentors. And I'm, I'm super excited, you know, my week is, is made, so. <laughs> yeah. So, Danny, tell me, what, what is the process now for you? You've just closed a deal. What are you going to do to keep that momentum flowing? Well, I mean, I think one of the things, you know, even just staying active, um, but also just getting out, reaching out to the community. Um, one of the things that I've been really trying to make sure I do is just, just get out more and just speak, speak to people and let them know what you're doing. You know, a lot of times you'd be surprised where, God puts you in certain places and you don't necessarily know why. And I've had a lot of encounters like that um, in the last few months where it was just random where you feel something say, hey, say something to this particular person. Yeah. or And you end up having this conversation where they're like, I don't know why or how this came to be, but this is exactly what I was looking for. You know, I literally was just right. thinking, I need to find a space. And I, I've had a few conversations like that where – that I said, just go ahead and say something to this particular person or right. just go this particular direction, not this direction, even though you normally go this direction. And I'm finding myself just, just listening to that voice. But, I, you know, like I said, I think the, one of the biggest things is really interacting. You know, I yeah. know we do a lot of um, stuff on social media, but a lot of people are necessarily on social media. And I think one of the things that a lot of us have lost sight of, and that's one thing that I love about you and Steve is that you guys are out in the streets, is that there's still people out in the streets that want it, but they, the people are scared to, to come out and talk. And, and so I think mm -hmm. that's really one of the biggest things that I'm finding. I mean, all the people that essentially contacted me for this space, it was not social media at all. It was either me being out or them just walking past or driving past and seeing my sign. And so, yeah. you know, um, old school, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, yeah. And, what I, and just to tie in on that is because one thing, it goes to your skill sets, right? And one thing we do at Infinity is we do a weekly role play session. And Danny is like, she is there like clockwork. And in our role play session, what we're doing is we go over our conversations of cold calling. We, yes, we do cold call. It's an old school tactic. But what it does, it builds up your mouthpiece, the miracle mouthpiece, the magical mouthpiece to move mountains and make millions. You feel what I'm saying? So that mm -hmm. you have the confidence to have a conversation with somebody on the fly. You got the confidence to hop on social media, do your videos. You got the confidence to negotiate with some of these asshole brokers out there and people that you got to deal with. And so that's that she's right. done consistently and relentlessly. And now it's coming out when I see it in her social media content, when I see it in her negotiation skills, and then the deals is, you know, and she got a full pipeline and stuff right now. So I, I'm glad y'all, y'all, I'll shut up. But like, when she's talking about, hey, she closed a deal, went on social, it was off the sign. It was an old school tactic. Mm -hmm. so, uh, 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 old, some of these old school principles, 
hey, they, they, they may not be as sexy or as, you know, uh, 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 um, as popular as some of, the, some of the other things that we do, but they get it done. And so it's all about getting it done. I just want to say that real fast. So let me ask a quick question here about that sign. Is there any way that we can keep that sign up there for a little bit longer? I think so. I don't think, yeah. I don't think, I, yeah, I, I'm sure he can. I don't think he would have a problem with that. Because that's part of our fishing, right? And mm -hmm. then it might be like, you know, that space is gone, but I, tell me what you need because, uh, you know, I might have something else available for you. So mm -hmm. you definitely want to try to keep that sign up. And, yeah. you know, while you know so many landlords, find out what other landlords will let you put your signs on their buildings. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, and we actually, we look, we, on that note, we got, we got a, a couple of spaces. That sign in the back is about to go up right now. I'm going to you know, kind of show y'all. You're about to see her signs all over East Oakland. Mm -hmm. And the rest of the Oakland, but East mm -hmm. Oakland is about, to be on, it's about to be lit. Yes, and East Oakland needs you. East Oakland needs you. So, yep. Danny, tell us about the transformation um, about loan commercial real estate since one here. The transformation before, because we know you had experience before. I was saying that you are one of the factors where Harborside was so successful in understanding the ins and outs of that retail industry. But as far as actually commercial leasing, can you talk about before and then when we started working together, what's your transformation been like? Yeah, so, you know, I really came into the, the real estate industry and kind of just kind of jumped right into um, leasing and I, we had a space that essentially I was able to take over as property manager and, you know, get some folks in. And I really was really learning as I went along, you know, and so definitely, you know, once we were able to connect, you know, and even taking the course, just being able to identify certain things that you know that you would need, you know, and, and, and kind of prepping um, the, the potential tenants, you know, making sure that they already have their financials ready, um, you know, making sure that I have a system for myself that I can run um, the credit checks, um, you know, just making sure even with insurance, you know, things initially that I wouldn't have thought of making sure that, you know, in the when I'm writing off the lease that there is a set uh, defined amount for uh, their insurance, but even with um, speaking with the owners, making sure that I'm very clear in terms of what in, is entailed in that lease rate and being very detailed. Is it, you know, what type of lease is it? Um, what, what utilities are covered or not covered? And so just really learning all those, those minor details. And even, you know, with other things like zoning, you know, as I started to get more clients that were looking for spaces, really being able to um, create a system for myself where I'm not doing extra work and, you know, checking certain things before I check the other things. And like I said, with zoning, right. that's something that, you know, when you're, when you're doing sales, you're not as, it's not as much of a factor, but with leasing spaces, um, I mean, and zoning is always going to be a factor, but yeah. just specifically with, with leasing spaces, um, it's even more of a factor, you know. And so just all those little minor details that I wasn't necessarily aware of really coming in that now it's like I, I'm able to look for it. And even when I'm working with uh, the owners or the sellers or, or excuse me, the, the, the landlords, um, they might not necessarily even know because this may be their first time with leasing out the space. And so helping them really navigate through that. And it's, it's, it feels good because I know prior to, I was, I, I wouldn't necessarily know. And so it's, it's definitely um, a wonderful thing for me to even be able to see that. And, you know, prior to where I was at Harborside for over a decade, um, it is very similar, you know, whereas you really have to, identify you have to really listen to the person talking to you you know when we were trying to help them with their products you have to really listen sometimes they they tell you this is what they want but when you really listen to what they're saying that's not necessarily what they want and so sometimes yeah. you have to uh, really help them figure it out and, and and really lay it out and make sure that you're listening so that you can really um kind of regurgitate it and make sure that what they said is indeed what it is that they actually want and so I, I definitely feel like just from where I started, where I was really learning as I, I go and being able to take the, the course with you 
And from from here, you know, even like I said, helping to uh, help the tenant kind of do some, things. And, you know, so it's it's really been a, a, a blessing. And I know that there's so much more for me to learn, so much more. But I think when you when you're learning more, you realize that there's so much more to learn. <laughs> yeah, it never ends, right? It, it never ends, and I know it's going to always be like that. But I, that's what I think one of the fun things about it is that there is so much. Um, to learn and then to be able to teach other people because I really feel like a lot of people are scared of getting into a business because they sometimes just because of that part where they feel like either they can't afford it or it's just going to be too difficult um, and, and and I know that's why we're here is to help them navigate through that process and make it easier for them and calm them down and be their counselor and all, all that good stuff but I, I'm here for it so <laughs> And could you share with us a little bit about what your day-to-day -day life is as a commercial real estate agent? Yeah, well, um, you know, I, I work with not only the owners of properties, but also um, potential tenants. And so certainly um, identifying, you know, really being, being organized and helping to look for those properties because it is really a day-to-day -day search, you know, um, depending on what the properties are. Some properties are moving really fast, you know, maybe more industrial properties are not sitting on the market for too long, whereas, uh, you know, perhaps offices and, uh, you know, those retail spaces are sitting there for a little bit longer. So, you know, um, trying to move really quick for those spaces that you or those type of spaces that you know are going to be moving fast, but then also paying attention to the ones that have been sitting long so that you could even potentially have some footing um, with the negotiations and stuff like that. And so you know, being able to identify those, um, definitely, you know, wanting to, uh, stay, stay in contact with your, with all your clients. So definitely, you know, taking the chunk out of your day to make sure that you're connecting with them and, and, and just being communicative with them and letting them know what, what's going on. Um, yeah. And I feel like a lot, you know, a lot of my time, and then even, you know, spending a certain time of the day and just getting out and making sure that, you know, you do uh, speak to people, you know, um, identifying certain businesses. Some businesses are online for you to find and then some aren't. And so definitely spending some time of that day as well, just driving around looking for properties. Sometimes they have signs. Sometimes they've been sitting there, you know, it's vacant. And so, um, you know, like I, I'm definitely finding where I'm, you definitely have to organize your day. Um, but sometimes you also have to do things on the fly. Um, but I am definitely, you know, throughout the day, it's it's definitely, you know, a few different things. And then also on the mommy, you know, and real mommy. And so then we have to, to do it all with the kids, too. So. Well, and I was going right. to bring that up because she didn't. I was going to say. Oh, I got to go get my kids. She got to go get her kids right now. Rich. But, like, Danny's a dedicated like, wife and mom, and her, her like, family literally comes first. But that does not that doesn't stop her from being out here and doing businesses, doing business. So I hope that if anybody is moms that's out there, that's business moms, that's out my business mamas, uh, you can get it done. It's a, it, it may require a little bit of bobbing and weaving through the schedule, like how she be doing. But look, but look, Danny is one of our more dedicated agents. So when we have trainings, she's there. If she's not there, she ever she, she texts. I got people ain't got no kids and ain't got nothing going and ain't, ain't showing up to meet. But then right. gets it all done. <laughs> it's about prioritizing. And um, so family's first, but also um, put, working within the cracks of time that she got to be able to, you know, work the business. And she, she's doing it at a high level. Okay, me? so does Danny have to get off the phone? She does. Yeah, I got to go run and grab the kills now. <laughs> okay, awesome. So, Danny, we'll get on a live another time because I wanted you okay. to share a little bit about 5263 Claremont and your experience as a landlord rep. Because the deal you just closed right now is as a tenant rep. Um, but even oh, though you still knew the landlord. It was a landlord rep, too. It was a little it bit of both. both. Right, but you were actually representing the tenant. Was that correct? No. Oh. Because you had to, because you, you were you, the, the... So the, the, the owner was who we were actually representing. And the, oh, okay. the found it through uh, the sign and gave me a call. Oh, so, okay, so you're actually representing the landlord. Yeah. Okay, because it was for sale, and so you're saying it is that. Okay, yeah. awesome. Yeah. yeah. So, 
next time when we get on, I want to talk more about being a landlord rep for actually having the listing yourself, like 5263 right. Claremont. Um, so, yeah, but thank you so much. And, Steve, if hey, you want to stay on for a couple hey. of seconds and yeah, tell us about here. your project. Love you. Identity. Love you guys. Too. See you later, darling. Okay. Steve, I have a couple of more minutes. Did you want to chat about your project? Off top. Of course. Okay. Well, we got a couple projects going on. I'm super excited because um, we just closed the deal in last week in Stockton. 30,000 square foot um, old hotel, 40 rooms. Okay. It's got 7,500 square feet of ground level retail. What we're going to do there is we're going to put how probably veterans housing and upstairs and with supportive services downstairs, and we've got prime time ground level retail that we'll be, you know, leasing out. Um, and we're looking for small businesses, and downtown Stockton is exploding. But that project goes in line with our existing project that we have, which is the old Sobe property in East Oakland on 73rd. Both these projects are going to be financed using the Opportunity Zone capital that we are we've started the Opportunity Zone fund and are beginning the process of raising capital so that we will have a pool of capital that we can deploy to be used to renovate our projects, but also that will be a, a source that will allow us to continually go out and raise more capital to control the capital to be able to reinvest how we see fit, as opposed to simply just going out and getting a construction loan and doing it like that. What we're, we're saying is that we're going to start a fund raise the capital, invest that fund into these projects to renovate and develop them and generate returns for investors, but also in a sustainable way that will allow us to go out and raise more capital so that we control our group and our groups and people we work with, in, 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 you know, um, down the line, can control the capital and which direction the capital goes. And for us being black entrepreneurs, that's paramount because we've always, always historically got the short end of the, of the, of the capital stick, mm -hmm. of the capital stack, like what they say. We always getting pinched out and pinched out. And so, like, our, our mind frame on that is like, look, that's what that is, what that is. We're going to do is go ahead and create a pool of capital that we control and that we direct and that we use to renovate properties and, and help finance businesses. Right, because what we what we see as landlords, what part of what we can do is we can help subsidize a business get going uh, by offering free rent. The, the deal we just did on Hagersport, uh, right. the landlord put up three months free rent. So because the property needs some work, so the landlord like, look, I'll give you some free rent. Get in there, put do your thing on it, and allow yourself to kind of get up and rolling. And as yeah. a landlord, that's kind of a way of like financing a business. And so within our fund. A big part of what we're going to be doing is is, is helping a black businesses, other other minority-owned businesses, women-owned businesses get rolling and participate in our properties, and and, and we man we we super excited about it. So you know, I super think. excited about it. And guess what? As today, I think the stock market tumbled 1,100 points. Uh, <laughs> we got we got home interest rates right now. Residential <laughs> home. Are you over there doing like the same thing like I was doing? So that means more money for foreign commercial real estate. It might be slower. It may be more expensive money. But right now, a, on average, a home interest rate is higher than a commercial interest rate. I don't remember ever seeing that, but that's what we have right now. Um, that just means opportunities. Yes, there's going to be some short-term pain for people who maybe are over-leveraged or not in the right position. But like if you're breaking into the industry right now and you're looking to build wealth, this might be one of the bigger opportunities for y'all to be able to do it, for us to be able to do it. And so as the, as the times is turning and, the you know, a year ago to buy a property anywhere, you were going to have to beat out Alibaba and the, and the phony thieves. And now you can negotiate, how about that word, negotiate for something that you want. So, I mean, we juiced about it, man. We excited about it. And, and it's just getting going right now. It's just getting going right now. So, you know. Can you share with us what type of investors you're looking for? And what type of people that we want to be working with? What type of well, there's, there's main, mainly two criteria of, of investors. The individuals, the marketplace would say high net worth individuals. What we're looking for is individuals who got some equity either in a business or in a home. And a lot of y'all don't realize, if you business owners, that you actually have wealth in your business. Um, but people who have wealth, 
have capital that they can invest, in, you know, at least fifty to a hundred thousand dollars without, you know, without breaking the bank. Because you don't want, we don't want people to go out there and break the bank. But we're looking for people with some capital. Don't be calling us. We're making money. We're making you turning your money right. into money. Well, right, right. <laughs> we're looking for the long term. We're not looking for. We're not doing flips with this. We're not doing flips. We're right. doing building long term sustainable wealth that's going to generate cash flow. But then we're also looking for for companies. Boutique investors, boutique investment shops, institutions that want to invest in something where they're not just getting a social impact brownie points. They are actually generating healthy returns and making a social impact investing through blacks and, and women owned entrepreneurs to where we actually make it money. And it's not a brownie point thing. Like we don't want people come pat me back. But if you're, if you're an institution, you're saying, hey, well, how do I invest capital and, and actually have a social impact? You want to rock with your boy because that's exactly what we're doing. And that's how it's going to benefit you and your company. So those are kind of the two profiles of investors, the individual investor, 50 to 100 Gs to invest where that ain't going to break the bank because you got equity in your home, you got equity in your business, you got equity in your properties. You got maybe some stocks or some cryptocurrencies that you own and you want to invest in real estate. And then the small the bo mid-sized boutique uh, you know, uh, corporate investors who are going to invest some millions into something that's going to make money and make a difference. That's so wonderful. Um, well, I have a quick question for you. What is the secret to your success? Yeah. First of all, faith. Because it, it, it ain't no secret. And I, and I really mean that because when I've looked at every challenge that I've had to, 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 to deal with, and there's always some challenges, right? And it's, it's, my, it's my faith in the Lord that keep me grounded and keep me focused because I, I can't tell you, DK, how many times I've been like, you know, why am I doing this? I can do something easier. I can go out there and sell houses or I can go out there and sit going on Wall Street or I can just go flip properties or whatever. But I've got a vision, right, of building a large company and we want Infinity Investments to be an international commercial real estate brokerage and investment firm with operating in markets globally. So when I when stuff hit the fan and I'm like, man, well, what you know, I get to my knees and I get in prayer and that grounds me. Then what it does, then what it does, because now I got a clear mind, a clear heart, I can now come into the business principles that I've been learning and soaking up my whole life. You know, I, I have a consistent program. I watch a YouTube video every single morning on business, on sales, on marketing, on something every single morning. I read books, I go to seminars, I'm a part of something called the Goldman Sachs 10,000 Small Businesses Program right now. Like a, it's like an MBA course for business, so you're always sharpening the ax, and that helps you be able to figure out how to solve the problems. But if I didn't have a faith, I wouldn't be grounded, and I would be twirling all over the place trying to figure out what you get up. And all I needed to do was just dig in, focus, retool, and then go after it. You know, so yeah. there's no secret to success other than just consistency grinding but it's starting with faith and that drives our, our mission that drives our vision that drives our values that drives our activities like and like i said we do a lot of old school where we roll the sleeves up we get the cold calling banging phones out driving for dollars yes we do video content yes we do ads yes we do social media yes we do emails yes we do direct mail and we get to the streets baby you know what i'm saying we don't waste no time with it so that's just part of the formula how we get things done and that's so wonderful. I know that um, so many people are blessed to be part of your sphere of influence and information and knowledge. So we appreciate that a lot. Love so you. let's le leave us with something, some, some good stuff. Do you want to talk about the Goldman Sachs? I'm going to have to jump yeah. off in about two minutes. No, no, yeah. it's all good. I got to go pick up my kids. Here's just the biggest thing, y'all. As I mentioned the stock market, I think today, I forget what the date is. I'm, what is it today, the 18th or whatever it is, it's, it tumbled 1,100 points, all right? I want everybody to be thinking about the opportunity. Don't think about, hey, maybe you lost some money. I lost some money in stocks too. But if you have stocks, you probably lost money today. Don't think about the money you lost or don't think about the, the calamities in the marketplace. Don't think about the interest rates being outrageous. Think about the opportunity that all these things create and figure out how you can find yourself to, to build wealth, make money, and make a difference in me. I guarantee you it's the best time to do it. But that's yeah, why I want to be And let's tap in. Right. And another thing is, too, there were some people who lost money today. But there was a crap load of people who made a lot of money today. And whether the market is going up or the market is going down, you have an opportunity to make money. 
But, right. you know, uh, what Steve is saying, the due diligence and just moving forward and getting it done. It's really not about the losses over a long period of time. Right. It's about how the game, you know. I think us being from Oakland, uh, where we are really big on word of mouth talking with the mouthpiece, yeah. as we were saying earlier, about the hustle, the grind. Mm -hmm. You know, being from where we're from, our hustle is completely different. Most people are like, how do you guys get all that stuff done? And we're just like, because we do it. <laughs> so, it. yes. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. I'm DK by the Bay with Steve Peterson with Infinity Investments. We appreciate you guys coming on this live. We're going to do that again. We're going to be praying for Steve and keeping him uplifted with his Goldman Sachs opportunity because he's killing the game with that. He's preparing a way for not only his family, but the family in the community, the family of tomorrow's community in Oakland, in the Bay Area, San Francisco, excuse me, Sacramento, Stockton, Sacramento yeah. areas. And we're just going to keep on going. So this is going to be on YouTube. We appreciate you guys. Please watch the live. Lots of love. All right, y'all. See you later, Steve. Thanks so much. All right, yeah. Okay, bye. Peace.